Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm be showing you how to code your own Discord bot in Java using Discord JDA. I'll show you how to do it step by step, straight from the start, so you won't actually need to know Java for this tutorial. Whatsoever, I'll teach you everything you need to know, starting from the beginning at getting Java on your computer. So anyway, let's get started. So let's get started by going to our web browser and open a few links down below in the description. I'll have all the links we need for this video down below so you can just click them, download all the stuff you need. But the first link we're going to go to is this link uh, over here and it's going to take you to the download page for Java Development Kit. So Java Development Kit is actually necessary to code in Java. So we're, well, we're coding in Java, so we need Java Development Kit. So <laughs> just get the latest version, uh, accept license, and then you can you know get your Windows version or whatever. Fairly easy. So after you're done with that, just brush that off, install Java, fairly easy. Most of you should probably have Java installed, but this is Java Development Kit, so it's necessary if you want to actually code in Java. Anyways, the next thing you need is an IDE. Now, an IDE is kind of like a program that you code in, and it has all the stuff you need to code. Theoretically, you could do all this in a text editor, but I really recommend Eclipse because it helps you actually see your errors and help you fix your errors a lot better than other text editors would normally do. It also has a lot of features packed in. So basically, what I'm trying to say is download Eclipse because you need it. So anyway, go to this link I'll have down below in the description. Click download for 64-bit or whatever bits you have. Hopefully you're not on 8-bit because we don't have a download for that. And just click download over here and it'll download straight to your computer. I don't actually need it because I have it. So after that, we're going to need to get JDA. Now, JDA is actually a wrapper for the Discord API. Basically, what that means is it's going to help us interact with Discord. Now, that's the simplest way I could put it. So using JDA, we can make our own Discord bot that basically interacts with Discord. That's what Discord bots do, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to this link down below in the description. It's going to be a GitHub URL. And you're going to want to scroll down until you see this download thing right here. Click download. Then go over here to the latest version. It'll always be at the top. Click on that and then click the normal jar over here. Now, the last thing we have to do is create our Discord bot in Discord's developer panel, which basically makes Discord give us a token or like a little uh, string of text that we can use to connect our bot. Uh, I'll show you in a second. But basically, go to discord.gg or discordapp.com. Link below in the description. Sounds like I'm doing an advertisement, but great, great app. Anyway, <laughs> go to developers over here and then go to developer portal. And after you're here, you'll see all the applications. You probably won't have any if you're doing this video, but uh, I have a lot of... Uh, uh, weird ones, but anyway, we're gonna click create an application. It should be the first or the very last and Let's title our application now a great way to get a bot name is to go to a random noun generator and this one uh, uh, Generated television, so I'm like, okay, I'll use television So we're using television for the bot name for this test video doesn't really matter just title it literally anything and we're gonna call it television and uh, a thing that visions over telly and we're done with that, so just click save. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're gonna wanna add a bot to our app. So just go to your bot section right here um, and just click bot and you'll see build a bot. So that's what we want. We wanna add a bot to this, yes do it. And a wild bot has appeared apparently. And so this is our bot. We have the username of the bot and we also have a discriminator, which is what this thing's called. And so it's basically like a normal user, except it's a bot user. So it can go in infinite servers and not just a hundred, like a normal uh, user. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. So anyway, we're gonna add an icon to this and I have a perfect icon prepared for this That I forgot they don't support uh, gifts. Let's see if it still works. Okay. It works. Cool um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a very nice image there. What about the uh, internet always crashes? Yeah, anyway, so now that we've prepared our bot with a nice icon and a good name Hopefully a good name uh, Hopefully better than mine, but anyway, we're gonna go to the OAuth tab over here on the side and we're going to go and select a bot down here because we're making an invite link for a bot. So we want to invite our bot to our server, right? Because it's not invited. So we're going to want to do that. And let's do that right now. So basically, we created a bot link. And now we want to give permissions to our bot. So this is similar to like giving permissions to a user in your Discord server. If you want it to only send messages and ban members, you can do that and you can't do anything else. But just for development purposes, it's always easy to put it as administrator and it'll give you full permissions. So you wouldn't want to do this after you've developed your bot and you're about to like export it to a bunch of servers. But for now, administrator is good. And then just click copy up here on the link. 
open it in another tab in your web browser of choice and it'll open up a little selection here. Just select the server you want it to go in. I called my test server uh, Toasty Tester. Uh, so now that we're done with that, we can just close out of our web browser and that's it. So now if we go into Discord, what you'll see is in our Toasty Tester server, we'll see we have our bot. It's uh, uh look, a Wumpus is greeting us. Anyway, yeah, we have a bot. It's a bot, it doesn't really do anything right now. So what we gotta do is we gotta throw code at the bot to make it do something. So now you wanna open up Eclipse to add your code in, because we're gonna code in Eclipse. I'm gonna make a new workspace. I'm just gonna call it uh, Television. Um, television, and that's good. So we're just gonna launch it up. So this workspace will be just like what yours will look like when you uh, log in. So it'll be pretty easy to go from here. But anyway, when you open up Eclipse, it's gonna look like this. It's very, um, yeah, very white. But anyway, open it up, click Workbench over here, and you'll see your Workbench, ta-da. <laughs> I, I would recommend closing some of these little tabs over here. They're not really necessary for what we're gonna do, so just minimize them, minimize them, and resize this package explorer, it's kind of fat. Okay, now we're, well, we're here. So, we're gonna wanna go right click on our package explorer, click new, and then Java project, because we're creating a Java project. Now, I'm gonna call the Java project the name of my bot, so television is fine for me, and click finish down at the bottom here and you'll create your own Java project. Now you can pat yourself on the back because you created a Java project, but it doesn't have any code, so you can cry about that as well. Now we can create a new package inside of our project, which your package is basically like a little folder that stores all types of code in it. So you can have a package for like uh, listeners or commands or something, and they'll be in different packages just to organize things, pretty much, that's what they're for. But for this package, this is gonna be our main package, so I'm just gonna put my name um, or my website backwards. So if my website was like uh, techtoolbox.com, I put com.techtoolbox, but I don't really have a real domain, but I'm gonna put my name like that. And then the name of the bot would be preferable after that, and we're done. So, well, we created a package. Now, we need to make a file inside the package. So I know it's a lot of nesting instead of like project, package, class, but we gotta make a class, which is basically a file of Java code. And we're gonna call it main since our since it's our main class. You can also, I guess, name it um, something like uh, television. I think I'm actually gonna name it television. So if you wanna rename something in Eclipse, just go to refactor, right click refactor, and then you can go to rename and you can name it something else. So I'm just gonna call mine television. It doesn't really matter. You could call it bot.java or something like that. But that's how that works. I'm just gonna make this code a little larger. And now an important thing we need to do is we need to actually import our JDA uh, jar file. So remember we downloaded that earlier. This is it on my desktop right here. So what I'm gonna do is go to my television project, right click, click properties. Then we're gonna go into Java build path on the side here, click the libraries tab, and then click add external jars. And then import that, click apply and close, and you're good to start coding your bot. So fairly easy, stuff like that. One thing I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna quickly set a jar theme for this so your eyes aren't burning. Um, so yeah, give me two seconds. Ah, that feels a lot better. But anyway, uh, here it is. So we're ready to start coding. So, so now here's the fun part. We actually get to start typing something. So that's always great, uh, sometimes until it airs out. But anyway, so we're gonna start with a new line inside of uh, these two brackets. These two brackets basically contain all the code that we wanna put inside of this file. So we're just gonna do public, static, JDA, JDA. Now JDA is a variable that we're gonna use to basically reference the actual JDA file we imported. So that's gonna allow us to do things related to our bot. So anyway, you'll see that there's an underline right here uh, with red, which basically means it's wrong. But don't worry, it's not wrong. You can actually fix it by importing it. So you can hover over on JDA or anything that's underlined. And if it says import, you can click on it and it'll import it, which basically means it'll, it'll find the file that it's related to and then just like link it to your file. So what you wanna do here in this case is you can click import, but a great command I like to teach is control shift O and it'll automatically import all the stuff for you. So you don't even have to hover over, just control shift O, if something's broken, bam, it fixes it. So that's good. Anyway, now we're gonna make a main method and this main method is something that will start when you start the bot. Like right when you start the bot, this is the code that's gonna run. So I'm gonna just title it main method here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do public static void main, there we go, main method, right? And then we're gonna do string inside of here, string two brackets, and then we're gonna put args after it. And that's about it. That's the whole thing we need. 
All right, so here's the fun part. We're gonna make our bot connect to the bot account we created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type JDA is equal to new JDA builder. So this is gonna create ourselves or build ourselves, I suppose, a new bot, which is pretty good. And then we're gonna put account type over here and that's gonna define the account type we need. And we wanna put bot, account type dot bot. So it's gonna be a bot account. You can also make a client account, which is like uh, connecting to, for example, your own Discord account, but don't do that because that's against terms of service and you're gonna probably get banned. So don't do that, okay? Always use bot. Okay, good, lesson learned. All right, so we're gonna do set token over here and the token is actually the little thing. Uh, it's not actually little, it's a pretty long amount of text and you put it inside of here and it basically connects to your bot. Now you do not wanna share your token with anybody because if they get a hold of your token, well, let's just say they can probably delete every single channel in your Discord server. Uh, they can also maybe kick every user in your Discord server, maybe ban them. So don't do that, okay? Don't share your token, otherwise bad things will happen to every server your bot is in if somebody else gets a hold of it and it's in the wrong hands. Yeah, anyway, so we're gonna do dot build async at the end <laughs> after that amazing interruption there. And we want to import JDA Builder. And remember, Control Shift O on your keyboard is the best command shortcut ever. And now everything looks good. And we want to paste in our token. So you're going to want to go to your web browser again. Go back to the Discord website. Go under Developers, Developer Portal. Does this feel familiar? And then we're going to go to Television. We're going to go to uh, our bot. And we're going to go to Token. Now, never share your token. Once again, don't share it. And if you share it by accident, just regenerate your token. It'll give you a new one. But here's my token. I know, I just said don't share it, but yeah, whatever. Do whatever you want with it. I'm probably gonna reset it anyway. I'm probably gonna forget and you can probably delete my test channel, but it's just a test channel. Anyway, so now if we wanna run our bot, let's just quickly do that. We'll click run television up here at the top with the little green button. I'm gonna move the console down here just by dragging it. And you'll see uh, that your bot is okay when it says finish loading. And if we go back to Discord, uh, ta-da, <laughs> our bot is enabled. It's also a wumpus. Once again, anyway, yeah, our bot is enabled as you can see it's online, but it doesn't do anything right now So we want to add some commands to it But before we do that, I actually want to do one thing and that's set a playing message So as you can see I have a playing message up here and it says I'm playing a game which is Eclipse um, So that's fun But yeah, I want to do that as well on the bot and I also want to change the online status to maybe Either idle or do not disturb that would be fun. So we're back in Eclipse so We're gonna click the stop button to terminate the process uh, and I'm just gonna close the console once again, and we're back in here. We're back where we were So we're gonna add a new line to actually set uh, the bot as idle So we're gonna set it as idle pretending like you know, it's not doing anything So it's just waiting for a command. So we're gonna do jda dot get presence uh, Which is gonna get whatever that that little uh, thing is called This is basically called the presence and so is this this is also called presence uh, it gives information about a user and then we're just also going to do set status Which is the actual icon there so we can set it to idle so online status dot idle and Dot idle here. There we go. Perfect and this one line will make it so it's idle But let's also add a game while we're at it. We're gonna do JDA dot get presence once again and then we're gonna do dot set game and then we're gonna do game dot uh, let's do hmm, do you want to do streaming watching uh, let's see television. I guess television watches them, right? Uh, or I guess it technically streams stuff over cable. I don't know how television works. <laughs> anyway, watching, um, watching, uh, boring comedy shows. I don't know why that came to my head, but boring comedy shows it is. So now, if we start a bot once again, you'll see that our new presence has been applied, and it says uh, watching boring comedy shows. That's great. I don't know why it's still online. That's uh, not very reassuring, but hopefully it does change. So here we go. I waited for a little bit. I don't know why it took so long, but here it is. Idle is working. So yeah, um, it seems like the bot didn't stop last time I stopped it, so it had to restart itself. But anyway, we have idle. It's watching boring comedy shows. That's all I could ask for. So now that we got that, we want to add some commands to our bot, right? So let's do that. So we're going to go back into Eclipse. I just realized I said so like 30,000 times, but we're going to go over to our package explorer again. You're going to visit this place a lot when you're making new classes, which is remember files of code. So right click on your package, click new, click class, and we're going to call this uh, commands. Yeah. So we're going to put our commands in here. This is going to be our commands class. Now, every single uh, commands class you want to put extends 
listener adapter. Now, listeners are basically, well, things that listen for an event. Now, an event, uh, for example, is when you send a message. So if we type F, that would make an event of sending a message. Um, also, for example, adding a reaction of, uh, this one sounds good. <laughs> adding a reaction is also an event. So you wanna make sure uh, that you capture the event, in this case, the event for adding a new message, because that's how events, right? You send a message to um, to do a command, right? So we're gonna do that. So to do a an event, which is, this is gonna be a similar format for everything, but we're gonna do public static, if I could type once again, public void, I'm actually not gonna do a static this time, um, on guild mess, oh geez, message received event. And I'm gonna actually not put the event part there, just. You can, you can change this to pretty much anything you want, but I'm just gonna put it to that for now. And also, guild message, and then here it is. I'm just saving myself some time. Received event. And then we're gonna put event over here, and there we go. So basically what this does is it registers uh, whatever, every time an event basically happens, so the, every time this event occurs, it runs code that's inside of here. Inside, well, this where this cursor is. So that's perfect, because if we want Every time a message is sent, if we want to do something, that's great. But we don't want to do it every time. We want to check for like a prefix, right, in the beginning. So for example, maybe like a, like a tilde and then test, right? That would be our command. This would be the prefix. You don't want to send every time, every time a message is sent, you don't want to run a command. So we're gonna to go to our television class and I'm gonna make a new string. Now a string is basically just characters, like a normal character. You can also include numbers in there, but um, we're gonna do public uh, static prefix, uh, actually public static string and then prefix. And we're gonna set this this equal to whatever you want your prefix to be, so in my case it's that. And then put a uh, semicolon at the end to end every single line, that's how Java works, so you have to have a semicolon. Pretty simple. Anyway, uh, the static also, by the way, makes it so any class, any single class here, can use this, which is what we want because we want to reference it. So anyway, now we're going to check to make sure there's actually a prefix in front of the message that's being sent, right? To actually activate a command. So fairly simple here. We're going to actually split everything up into arguments here. Arguments are like little pieces. So for example, this would be arg1, argument2, argument3. So these uh, arguments are separated by spaces. So every single argument is separated by spaces. And we want to check if the first argument has uh, one of these. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little string list um, and we're going to do args is equal to event dot get message and then we also want to get the raw message, the raw message. Yep, there we go. Get content raw and we want to also split it up every single time there's a space, right? Because every argument has a space in between, so we want to split it up. That's it. Now we've created our arg statement and now we can do an if statement. Now an if statement is basically a conditional thing. It checks if something is true. That's the simplest way to explain it. So we could do an if statement here and in between here, we can do args zero. So we're checking for the first argument. Uh, Java counts from zero up. So it doesn't start at one. The first, the first thing here wouldn't be one or this first argument wouldn't be one. It'd be actually zero. The second will be one. So just minus one, whatever you think the argument is. So the, if the first argument, which we're checking for here, um, and then we wanna, we wanna actually get the message itself. So equals ignore case. That's basically gonna make it, make sure that no matter like how the command is written, no matter if it's written like, I don't know, what's a weird way to write it? Test like that with different cases, it's still gonna run the same command, even though it's written differently. So we're gonna do that. And now we wanna check um, what the command is. So we're gonna test command for now. Um, and then actually, well, let's do, let's do a different command. Let's do an info command. It's going to send information about the bot. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then we're going to go to main and then we're going to add dot prefix here and then add like that. And I also just realized that we didn't call our main class the main class. We called it television, but that's fine. I think I'm forgetting how to type, uh, television there took like 10 tries, but I did it. So basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna take the prefix from the beginning here, which is this one, and add it to the message, which is gonna technically, this is gonna make a tilde and then info. Um, so we'd have to run tilde info in order to run whatever's in here. So that's pretty simple. So now we gotta make the command actually do something. So now let's send a message to the channel that the command is uh, executed in. So in this case, we wanna send it in the same channel, which is general. So we're just gonna do this, it's fairly easy. Event.getChannel.SendMessage and then we could put the message we want to send. Hey there, I'm alive. 
like the bot is alive or something. It's like some weird AI or something. I don't know. And at the end of everything, like a message or something, you want to put doc hume. And before I do that, I want to make it look like it's typing in the in the chat. So forever, whenever I'm typing, if I press F, so you can see I'm typing up here. And it also usually says it at the bottom here. I want it to do that before it sends it. So I'm just going to replace this. And then I'm going to get the channel and then send typing. Uh, dot send typing. And it's going to send uh, a thing which basically says the bot is typing until it sends this message. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, now we've got our command. This is actually going to be a fully working command. And just these three lines. Well, I guess if you count all these other lines and all the other classes. But anyway, just don't pay, don't pay attention to the minor details. The three lines we have here is the command. So we're going to go over back into our main class, which is our television. And we're going to register this file as an event. Um, so all you want to do is basically go over here. Oh, geez, I already messed it up. All right, go back uh, at the bottom. Just do JDA dot. And then we're going to add a listener event. And we're going to type new and then the name of the class. So in my case, it's just commands. So new commands and then two parentheses at the end. And now we've registered it. So now all we have to do is run the bot. So just click this uh, run thing at the top. Make sure there's no errors here. And once it says finish loading, go into your Discord. Uh, hope it didn't break. Type the command info and there we go hey there i'm alive i don't know fairly simple and what you saw there is if you pay attention i'm gonna do it again at the bottom here you'll see that it sends a typing message there we go and it sent that so this time it seems to have glitched out the, the, the typing message is a little glitchy what you what it's usually supposed to do is send the message or send the typing and then the message after it would remove the typing but um, in this case, it's uh, it's broken, but that's fine. It just goes away after a few seconds, as you saw there. So that's about good. So now I want to teach you embeds. Now embeds are really cool. I'll have a picture on the screen right now of a sample embed. But yeah, that's an embed, and an embed can be used to display information pretty nicely. Actually, it's like a little card that you send in the channel. So let's do that. Let's send some information about the server uh, in a nice little embed. So let's go back to our commands and we're going to actually start by creating an embed here. So we're going to go ahead over here at the top and we're going to create a nice little embed. Now to create an embed, you need to create an embed builder, similar to how you need to create a JDA builder to make a JDA bot. Yeah, very, very simple. Oh, also stop your bot after you're done. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, anyway, let's create an embed builder. So just literally type embed builder. Uh, I think, yeah, I spelled embed correctly. Cool. Um, and let's title our embed. So I'm just going to call this info. Uh, it's a nice info embed, so that's that. And we're just gonna do new embed builder over here, and that's that. Now what this, uh, let's actually quickly do control shift O first. Um, what this does over here, we're putting new embed builder, that's called instantiating something in Java, or basically just making it work in this case. Um, yeah, you'll learn about instantiation later. I'll have a card on the screen as well, talking about what it is. But anyway, let's also add some stuff to our embed. So let's add a title to our embed. Um, and info is our embed. So you could just do info and then add title, or actually set title in this case. So we're going to set the title as, um, what is it? Bot, bot's called television. Television, uh, inf television bot information. Let's do that. Yeah, sounds cool. And we're going to do that semicolon at the end and now we have info dot set title television bot information that's going to make the top of the embed have a thing that says television bot information <laughs> yeah let's let's actually see if i can add an emoji on windows it's uh windows key period and let's do television there we go and um Let's just casually remove that and hopefully that displays properly. All right, so we're gonna do another one. We're gonna add, let's see, what can we add? We can add the creator, right? So let's create a thing called a field. Now a field basically just splits up information into two little lines. And on one line, it's the title of the field and on the bottom, it's like the the data of the field, I suppose. So pretty easy, just do info dot add field. And then you're gonna put two things in the field. You're gonna put one, two, and then also, I think null is at the end. Actually, no, false at the end. The last one in this case is uh, whether it's inline or not. We're going to want to make it not inline. So we're going to save our file. And also, since I put an emoji, it wants it to save as UTF-8. So if you do something like that, just UTF-8 like that. In the first little set of quotes here, you're going to put the title of the M or of the field. So the field title, I'd be putting like the creator, right? And I'll put myself at the bottom as the actual value. So check toolbox. Um, and then that's about good. Oh, let's also do a description. Yeah, let's add a description to our embed. So we're going to do uh, set description and 
uh, let's do something like this, like, use, oh yeah, completely useless information about a, about a useless bot, yeah. Information about a useless bot called television. Very passive aggressive, I know, even though it's sending it itself. And let's also add a color. Now, you can add the, a color to the side of the embed as well. So, we're going to do info.setColor. And we're going to do 0x. And then what you're going to do is open up your web browser and type HTML color picker. Uh, hopefully, you're in Google because Google has one of these. And you can choose any color you want. I'm feeling like a little bit of a red for some reason today. Um, so, we're going to do this color here. Copy paste everything but this little uh, pound sign in front. And then paste it right after the 0x and semicolon at the end. And that's about it. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to send this instead of the hey, I'm here, whatever, a live message. So we're going to do info.build. Um, that's going to basically take our embed and build it, I suppose. That's the easiest way to say it. Combine all this stuff into one little thing and send it. And then after we sent it, we want to clear the embed because that saves on some uh, system resources, some memory. So uh, embed.clear. And that's it. So let's run this one more time. Let's click the little run television at the top. Let's go back into Discord. So we're just going to do info. And okay. Yeah. Uh, let's do info again. There we go. There's a television. Completely useless information about a useless bot called Television Creator Tech Toolbox. So this embed is cool and all. But let's add another step of personalization. And add the user's icon and name at the bottom as a footer. As a creator. Instead of... Instead of having this field over here, we'll have it at the bottom, okay? So let's do that quickly. Let's go back into here, terminate our bot's existence for a second. And we're just going to do another thing here at the bottom. There's another uh, a thing that an embed has, and it's called a footer. And what you can do is you can put text and also an icon on it. So what we can do is we can do event.getMember, uh, which is the user that actually sent the uh, command in the first place, and we can get the user, or get the, yeah, we want to get the user, not set the user. So we can set the user, or I meant get the user, I'm confusing myself, pretty much get the user, and then get the avatar URL, which is going to get the URL for their icon over here. And then you also want to put some text here, so created by tech toolbox or whatever and let's actually remove this field now because it's basically redundant to have our creator field be there as well um and then television at the top so it's not information it's more television and let's see we have an error here oh yeah i didn't put a little semicolon at the end now that we do it all lights up in perfect colors we can click the run button one more time go back into discord Let's type an info command one more time and as you can see television completely useless information about a useless bot called television created by Tech Toolbox. That's how embeds work. They're very nice and simple and a really great way to display information. You can even put images in the actual embed, which is an awesome feature of them. But anyways, guys, that's about it for this episode. Today was a fairly simple episode, just creating some commands, but it was a very, very fundamental step in creating your Discord bot and also in your Discord bot journey. If you guys want to see more videos just like this, Leave a like on this one and I'll make another episode uh, on how to code a Discord bot. Also, if you have some suggestions about what you want to see, how to code, I can do very complex things. So just leave a comment down below in the comments section and just tell me what you want to see. But anyways, guys, that's about it. All the source code will be down below in the description so you can go download it and uh, copy it. I will remove the token even though it's kind of useless now, isn't it? I'll leave the token in. Who cares? Anyways, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one. Oh,